Hello guys. We've got Assassin's Creed Revelations. It's a very sexy game. Yes, like I said, Assassin's Creed Revelations. This is the fourth game. This is the third Ezio game and the fourth game in the whole Assassin's Creed series. This builds upon the the latter third of Ezio's career as an assassin. Um, the game takes place in Constantinople or Istanbul. It's uh, kind of it's in Turkey, in case you didn't know, and it's uh, made by Ubisoft, and it's. Published by Ubisoft, yeah. and it's it's a connection. Etio makes a connection between Altair, a very special connection. Basically, Altair has hidden this library, and to get in there, Etio has to find some keys that Et or that Altair made. And to find those keys, he's gonna have to kill some people. He's gonna have to look some places. He's gonna have to do some things some very BAMF things. Yeah, and so Ezio is cool, very cool as always, and this is a great game. I loved it. So let's start off with the unboxing. So like I said, it's made by Ubisoft, rated mature. Uh, I can't imagine why though. Assassin's Creed? Really? It says blood, language, mild sexual themes, uh, you know, violence, this game is definitely less sexy than Assassin's Creed 2, especially. Assassin's Creed 2 is probably the sexiest one, because SEO is definitely doing doing some business in that game. He's much older now. Well, he does actually, he kind of finds a girl in this one, so I won't spoil it, but yeah, he finds someone a little bit special. Uh, let's see, let's see one player but it also has multiplayer so the great multiplayer the very innovative and very unique multiplayer returns it's a little bit better especially the lobby system that's something I'll get to later it's got a large install uh, hard drive space requirement for the PS3 it's 3.6 so for some of you that might be a problem but for those of us who have lots of room, really not that big of a deal. Uh, I think I already said it's 3D, maybe I didn't, but you know, I'll get to that. And so let's open this sucker up. So we got the Uplay Passport. There's the code in case you want to try to steal it. It's already been used, so it sucks for you, not for me. I can play online and get cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is required for online play. And then here is the manual. This one, let's see, it's kind of like the Arkham City manual. Very, very little information. So that's that. And here's the disc. Nice looking PS3 disc with Ezio and Altair on there. And so that's it. So let's get, get on to the review. Like I said, Ezio is trying to look for keys for a hidden library that Altair has hidden, obviously. Um, and these keys, they contain flashbacks to Altair's life and where he hid them. Or no, not where he hid them, just flashbacks. Uh, you get to see a lot more of what Altair did after the uh, Assassin's Creed storyline, also during the Assassin's Creed storyline, some stuff that wasn't included in the game. Um, so that's great. It's, it's actually a lot of fun playing as Altair again. Uh, there's a little few inconsistency, inconsistency, bleh, I cannot say that word, inconsistency problems. Uh, with Altair 
in Assassin's Creed 1, he, he didn't have the moves that Ezio did. But I think they accidentally added some of those moves. Or maybe they didn't do it on accident, I don't really know. But um, that could be a little bit of a problem for a storyline. But really not that big of a deal. Um, yes, gameplay takes, in, takes place in Istanbul, which is in Turkey. This is definitely a very different setting than than uh, Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood. Uh, it's kind of similar to like Damascus and Jerusalem in Assassin's Creed 1. Uh, so it's very Middle Eastern feeling. Uh, but it's still very cool. There aren't that many tall buildings. I liked, I loved Assassin's Creed 2 because there were tons of churches and stuff to climb all over the place. Um, and this one really I mean, really, the only cool platforming area was uh, Hagia Sophia. Um, you get to jump around inside of that after you find some some stuff, some collectibles. You've got to find like ten collectibles. I don't know what they are. I forgot. The Hagia Sophia, you know, climbing around that—that's that's like a. It brings me back to the good times in Assassin's Creed 2. That had a lot of platforming. Um, and if you haven't caught already, Assassin's Creed 2 is my favorite in the series. Definitely. Uh, da, 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 da. Gameplay, they add the hook blade, and they add the bomb system, so you can create bombs. The hook blade, I think, was a little unnecessary. I didn't think it was very useful. Uh, some people would say that it was good for faster climbing, and you could do more moves in battle. Really. The moves in battle, you really can't do that when you're uh, you're, in, you're surrounded, I guess. You can't do them there, and climbing faster, that's really not anything I need. I think I think Ezio already climbs pretty fast for a 50-year-old, so uh, that's already pretty amazing enough. Uh, and then the bomb system, bomb crafting system, I think that was, it was cool. Uh, Bombs are interesting. I think I think the game could have used more push to make me use them because I did not use bombs hardly at all. Uh, smoke bombs, smoke bombs were okay. Actually, I didn't use those that much. I didn't use any of the tripwire bombs. Let's see, I used some sticky bombs and the. Uh, contact bombs. Yeah. I mean, really, it's just... It seems like... It seems like a good idea, but it's not that useful. Uh, and then... Something that I kind of wish they didn't do... I didn't really like this. Um, what they did in Brotherhood, if I remember correctly, they had... They had like little buildings that you could uh, you would kill the I can't remember you would occupy you would occupy this tall building and it would unlock the area of the map and that's how most of the Assassin's Creed games have been it's usually a viewpoint you synchronize at the top and then you unlock the map area and you jump off but in Revelations what they did is, as you gain notoriety by killing people throughout the game, uh, there are Templars who are wanting to take back those tall buildings. And instead of you just going in and killing them all, you have to do a tower defense minigame. And it's absolutely annoying, it's difficult, and it's just, it's very poorly implemented, and it really messes up the flow of the game. Uh, it's kind of like an RTS kind of game, so basically you will, you'll be at the top of a building on the roof, and there will be a bunch of roofs, and there will be like an alleyway in between the roofs, and the Templars will be going through the alleyway, like this, and you're going to put crossbowmen, and gunmen, and assassins, and you're going to put barricades, and put them all over the place, and try to try to kill 
all those Templars who are running amok. And so it sounds cool, but it's really not. I promise you it's not. It's really not. It's not. It is fun if you're good at it. But if you're bad at it, then you're constantly losing your Templar dens, and you have to get them back to unlock the shops in the area and stuff like that. Um, that brings me to another thing, which I didn't like. Uh, there was a severe lack of Ezio customization in this game. There were a lot of, a lot of closed die, clothes, closed dies that you could pick from, but there were not that many armor options. Luckily, the game does have a super armor that you can pick, you can get from doing some things, but there aren't very many basic armors. I'd say the same thing for weapons. I don't know why they kind of retracted on that. Seems like they went two steps backwards. Don't know why. I uh, wasn't very pleased with them. And yes, I know the review is sounding bad, but it's still a very good game, trust me. Uh, it's really all the bad things. The multiplayer, multiplayer is the same, pretty much. Uh, some new maps, new characters. The lobby system is brand new, and it's much, much better than Brotherhood. So, there's no more 20 minute waits just to get into a game. It's now about maybe 4 or 5 minutes, so it's very reasonable. I haven't played much of the multiplayer, uh, mainly because I was addicted to the single player in this. Uh, not as much as Skyrim, but you know enough to keep me away from the multiplayer. Uh, there are a lot of unlockables in the game, so that's great to keep you and your time occupied. And, uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say. And uh, one more thing. If you can see right here, there's a free Assassin's Creed download. Well, maybe it's not a download. It's on the disc. Assassin's Creed 1. You can get that on the PS3 version only. It's a PS3 exclusive. So I strongly suggest getting the PS3 version if you have not played Assassin's Creed 1. I already played it on the Xbox, so I didn't really need it, but I got it just for the lulz, because I like lulz, and lolcats. They're very nice. Yep, so this is Assassin's Creed Revelations. This is also on Amazon. It's where I got it. It is probably 30 bucks. I think it's 30 it might be 25 actually. Uh, so this one is, I think, it's much cheaper than the games that came out at the same time. Uh, not sure why. I think probably because the reviews weren't as good. I think the reviewers were harsh on this game. I think they expected a little too much. People were probably wanting Assassin's Creed 3. I, I think they could have gone ahead and done that. I'm not sure they needed to continue Ezio. So, but I, I love the game, so strongly suggest buying it. And 